The stained concrete project is done. And it was a big project, a lot bigger project than I anticipated. 14 times I mopped this floor, three times scrubbed with the initial washing, then the etching, the cleaning, then the staining, and then the sealing and the polishing. Many, many steps. It took a week to do this whole project, overnight dry times, multiple cleanings. It was a lot of work, but it was worth it. It turned out really, really well. Let's take a look. In the pantry, that was where I did my test spot. That looks good. Even out here in the mudroom area, in the bathroom, it just all turned out really, really well. In the laundry. It's got a great sheen on it. This gives us some really good depth in the character of the floor. Welcome to From Scratch Ranch. If you're new to this channel, we are a family in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas building a ranch from scratch and document it right here on YouTube. So, we are starting with this barn dominium and we are getting close to having it finished. We just finished the floors. Michaela and Kristen put in the floors in the loft area. We've got the ceilings done. We've got all the drywall, the paint, all the electrical fixtures, the fans, the lights, the outlets, the switches, all that's done. So the project now is the concrete floor. Concrete stain is a multi-step, multi-day project. There's a lot to it. I've never done this before. This is the first time I'm gonna do this, uh, but the instructions are pretty clear and uh, I know it's gonna be a lot of work. So the first step is we've got to put plastic on all the lower portions of these walls. Because this is our first time, we're gonna be probably splashing a bit. So um, I wanna protect the walls. So we're gonna get that plastic up, get it all taped out, and then we gotta clean these floors thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly clean them over and over again and make sure they're thoroughly dry. Then we stain it, then we seal it, and then we polish it. So quite a few steps in there. So we went with the Eagle Concrete Acid Stain and the Granite. No, graphite, the graphite color. So it's kind of got that uh, blackish, grayish color to it to really bring out this, um, the, 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 the gray elements of the concrete floor. So uh, our barn, this whole uh, bar dominium has got that black and white, industrial, modern farm, post and beam, even all of our, our dark posts and beams are all stained in ebony. And then we've got our black staircase and our iron pipes and stuff like that. So hopefully that graphite colored floor is gonna go really, really well with all of that. All right, I have all the materials I need to do this concrete staining job. I bought it all on homedepot.com and had it shipped to store with curbside pickup. And that was really important because of this COVID-19 crisis, I was able to whip in there, get it loaded in and out of there. So I've got the Eagle brand is what I bought. It's the Eagle brand concrete stain. Um, it's acid stain and I went with the Eagle brand across all the products that I'm using because I wanted to have a full system all by the same brand, get it done and done right according to the manufacturer instructions. I read a lot of reviews. There were a few bad reviews on this about color and about uh, how it turned out. Well, I think some of it's just either user error, didn't follow instructions, it wasn't the right uh, stain, they didn't clean it cor correctly. So I'm gonna follow the instructions to a T and make sure this turns out really, really well, including doing a test spot in the bottom of the pantry, in the floor of the pantry, because uh, I wanna make sure this is gonna work before I do this whole thing, because I can return this if I have to. So, and I will do a review after this is all done, uh, good or bad, I'm hoping good. So, onto the products. So I got the mop bucket. I went for the full on, you know, squeeze out the mop, mop bucket. I do have a, a small shop vac that I could use to uh, soak up some of that water, but I thought this would work really, really well, scrub the floor well with that. I do have a scrub brush also. So we'll be mopping up this floor really, really well. That's the first thing that's gotta be done and it's gotta be done right for this whole project to, to work right. So I got the Eagle Concrete Cleaner Degreaser Neutralizer, um, and that will help uh, neutralize any of the acids and, and any of the, 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 the grease that might be on here. There's not gonna be too much because this is a new concrete floor, so, um, but that will help just clean it up. 
Um, then I've got an etching clean. So I bought the Eagle etching clean, and this is to just etch the smooth surfaces to allow the acid stain to penetrate a little bit more. Now, this is not really a finished, finished floor. It's not really a, a real polished floor, uh, but there are areas that are kind of slick because it is like a garage floor where it is slick in some areas. So I just want to make sure, I want to get the full effect of the acid. So I got the, the acid etching. Then we've got the stain. So I've got four gallons of the graphite color acid stain. And I've got this pump sprayer here that I bought to go with it. Um, this is an acid staining pump sprayer. Now I know I could have used the many garden pump sprayers that I've bought over the years. I've got them laying around here all over the place um, that are cheap, but I wanted this thing to turn out well and I want the full system. And this was pricey, it really was. Um, it's about $70, um, but it's acid. So you're dealing with acid. So I wanted to do it right with this and I wanted it to spray right, I wanted it to work right through the whole process because it's gonna take a while to get all this stain on this floor. So I don't want it to like clog up, break down, have problems in the middle of it, and then have a floor that doesn't look 100% how I want it. So I didn't want to take any chances and I bought the sprayer to go with it. So I've got four gallons, that should cover, I don't know, uh, 800 to 1,000, 1,200 square feet, something like that. Uh, down here, I'm about 650 square feet or so on the first floor, so that should be plenty. To, to do that, um, at least one coat, and probably even some more on top of that, if I need it. Um, I did buy some rubber gloves, just in case, um, well not just in case, to actually use rubber gloves when I'm using the acid, because that is acid we're dealing with. I also did buy some disposable shoe guards at Home Depot, and these just kind of wrap over your boots, um, so that way you're not tracking any dirt and whatnot in there, it's a pack of 12. <clears throat> So once all the staining's done, you let that sit for like six hours or more uh, to get the effect that you want. Once it's all done, uh, then you need to neutralize the acids. And that's again, another gallon of the concrete cleaner, degreaser and neutralizer. So that's going to neutralize the acid and clean it off. And you gotta clean it really, really well, uh, multiple times to get it all off there. So you gotta use like a white cloth and kind of wipe it down to see if you're picking up any color anymore. And you gotta get that to where there's no color coming onto that uh, white cloth. And then that's when it's done from the stain part. Then next, we have to seal it. Once that uh, is all dry and ready to go, then you've got to seal it. And I've got the armor seal, the Eagle armor seal. It's a clear concrete sealer gloss. Um, and we're gonna put that down. It's five gallons. That should be plenty to do this whole first floor. And I'm going to use this lamb's wool uh, applicator. And there's a extension pole stick on this thing, screw it on. And uh, this is gonna be nice because it's not gonna leave any lint down. Um, you wanna use either a synthetic or a lamb's wool to put that um, sealer down so that you're not getting any, uh, you know, leave behind lint or anything that could get into the, the sealer. And then finally, I have the concrete polish. And this concrete polish is the final coat to help protect the floor and for anti-slip. Um, it says that uh, by putting the polish down, you won't have to reseal you know, years down the road. You can just put this polish down and a couple coats of that over the years, and that should do well. And I also got it just because of the anti-slip. We got the animals, we got ourselves, and socks. You're running across here, my daughter running across, I can see it now, and just sliding down across the floor. So we don't want that. So this product is enough to do roughly 600 to 1,000, maybe 1,200 square feet. So uh, it, this total cost for all of these materials was around $500, five to $600. Now I'll put a link uh, down in the description below to all of these products at homedepot.com and also uh, a full material list of everything else that I'm using to do this job. So let's get to it. Michaela's online meeting with her teachers doing school. Jason's working from home doing meetings. That leaves me to get stuff done during the day. Being a fitness and yoga instructor, of course, all the gyms got closed. So it leaves me with free time to check on the animals and the gardens and do a lot of prep work behind the scenes for some of the bigger projects that we do together as a family.
All right, I got the first step done. I've got the plastic. It's about three feet of plastic. It's a little higher in some spots, but that's fine. But I've got it all taped up. Now I'm just gonna go back around and tape it down at the bottom. Guess I'm done for the day. I'm out of tape. No, 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 no. I'm going to the store right now. Uh, <laughs> Almost done though. Is this all you got? This is this the last corner? Uh, no, I got oh, over I here. Longer. Just, I'm, but I'm, I'm okay. very close to done. Well, I'm heading to Home Depot for curbside pickup okay. of the stain that we ordered. They just texted saying it's ready. Uh, can you add on tape? Yeah, I, I will. <laughs> hard to see but there's these expansion cracks that they cut in these joints and so these are all caked in with all of the dirt and debris and the sand and mud so we've got to get those cleaned out really really good So that is all of the crud that I just dug out of all of those expansion joints. That is a lot. I can't believe that much came out of joints like that tiny. But they're nice and clean now. So we gotta make sure we scrape up any of these splotches of mud that got onto the floor. You just scrape them up like so. And then when we come back and we'll scrub it with water and that should all come up in the cleaner. It's really important to get all of this up. All right, here we go. Now I'm going to be using lots of water because I want this water to really soak this up. I'm not even going to squeegee that out. I'm just going to throw it on there. Now right there, there's some blood. Some blood, some blood, sweat, and tears that went into this place. Sometimes you can't even see it until it's wet and then you can really see the spots. See, here's a little bit of construction adhesive. Wire brush that. It's a lot of work, but this is what it takes to get it done right. Every little spot needs to come up. And voila, it's gone. Michaela stopped by to give me a hand. Wrapping up our first mopping. Got this whole area done for first wash, which I worked on getting all of the major dirt and drywall mud clumps and everything off. Did my initial scrubbing. So now I gotta come back and wash again. And again and again until it's clean.
So the, the concrete looks great. Look at that. It's super clean now. Um, it, just look, it actually looks really good just as it is. Um, they could probably just put a sealer on this and, and uh, it'll look nice. Now it's a little damp still because I've been mopping it. I've mopped it three times now. And I think that's pretty good. I'm not picking up any dirt. The water was not as dirty on that last round. So now what I'm gonna do is neutralize this and um, use a degreaser just to you know help out here. It's a concrete cleaner degreaser neutralizer. So I'm gonna apply that. It's a four to one ratio to the water. So I've got a bucket, uh, half a bucket of water. It's about two and a half gallons. So I'll add some of the degreaser to that and then I'll put it out on the floor. Now, I have some gloves and I've got some eye protection and I don't have a respirator, so I'm gonna have to use this mask here. All the windows and doors and everything opened up. I've got the, the fan going uh, to, to keep it, the air really circulated in here. Um, and I do have uh, this mask that I'm gonna use to help out as, as much as possible. Um, it's not gonna really protect me from the vapors. Um, but I can't get I can't get a respiratory ma uh, mask right now uh, because of the COVID-19 virus. They're just out of stock everywhere, and I can't order one in time to get here. And I need to get this floor stained, so I'm gonna do the best I can. Take breaks, go outside, get fresh air. You know, so hopefully, hopefully it'll be okay. All right, let's get started. All right, let's get this floor done. I was getting it on there really good. Let that sit on there. Do its magic. All right, so I got this first section done here. Now I don't want it to dry, so I'm gonna, it's supposed to sit for five to six minutes, but it took me that long just to get it on there. So uh, now I got this section done, I'm gonna come back with the clean water and mop bucket and start mopping this up before it dries. Okay, so I got my cleaner in this blue bucket here with the scrub brush, that green stuff right there. Yeah, that looks yummy. Uh, so I got my, my cleaner in the blue bucket. I've got my mop in the yellow bucket that I can squeegee out the, the liquid out of the mop. Then I got another bucket here of just fresh water. So this is, now that I've got it all cleaned up over there, I'm just using fresh water to pour out on it. Then I'm gonna use the mop to clean that up and put it in, in there and, and squeegee out the mop into that bucket. That way I'm not, you know, adding the soap back to the floor every time I rinse the mop out. So this is just rinsing it with fresh water. I don't want to get a hose here, it's not going to drain. No way for the water to get out of here. Thank <laughs> you. 
I just finished cleaning the floor, doing all the prep work, getting ready to put the stain on. Uh, many, many washes it took to get this thing clean. I used the degreaser neutralizer cleaner. It did great. I don't think I'm gonna etch it though. I bought the etching um, to give it a slight etch for the slick areas, but I, it absorbed the water so well, I don't think it's gonna need it. So I don't wanna waste the time and the material if uh, I don't really, really need it. So I'm gonna test uh, in the pantry over here, the floor of the pantry, the uh, stain. And if the stain takes in there really, really well, then I'm not gonna worry about the etching part. So we're going to let this dry overnight, and then tomorrow we will apply the stain, or at least the test spot first. All right, now I need to do a test spot. Now that the floor is all dry, all right, so now I've got the graphite color of the acid stain, and I'm gonna just pour a little bit of it into this cutout jug. That's very brown. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna use my brush to apply it in a test area just to see how it, it absorbs and color, I guess. All right, so I'm gonna test in the pantry here. Uh, instead of, you know, finding a spot out here, this is an area that no one's gonna see, really. So the first step is to dampen the concrete. Okay, let's try this. I'm supposed to use a pump sprayer to apply it, but I'm not gonna fill up my sprayer with this stuff yet because I'm just gonna test it first. So the big question is, do I wait the full six hours for the test spot to let it do its thing and clean that off and then see if it's right or not before I do the rest. That means I gotta wait a whole nother day. So I think I'm going to just because this is coming on this brown color, which they say it's gonna not be the color that it actually turns out to be. When you first apply it, it's, it's one color, but it actually stains the concrete in a different color. So I'm confident that this will not be, uh, you know, a, a orange floor. But we'll, we'll give this a few hours, I guess, and just to make sure it's uh, working correctly. And I'll probably wait to do the rest of the floor tomorrow, just to make sure I do this exactly right. Two hours have gone by, and this is what it looks like. It's all dry now, and it still looks very brown. It doesn't look very good. So we're hoping that uh, we do the right process, give it enough time, get it cleaned up properly, and put the sealer on it. It will bring out the right colors and look really good. All right, so it's the next morning, and I've already put the neutralizer on there. It was still brown. It was still brown, and you can kind of tell. But I think I'm gonna scrub that off in a minute. It's been sitting there for a couple minutes. It needs to sit for five, six minutes or so, and I'll start scrubbing and washing this off, and we'll see what color it turns out to be. Well, we've let this dry completely, and to me, it does look brown, and it is a little blotchy. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and use the etching clean on top of the floor now. I'm gonna actually go ahead and use the etch. Now, this, th that is acceptable to me. I, I, I will, you know, I would go forward with that. Um, I think once I put the clear coat on that, it will bring out the, the depth and make it look better. Um, but just to be safe, because you can't like undo anything, um, I'm going to do the etching clean and see if that helps. Because this is a smooth child surface. So uh, I think that might help with absorbing the acid into the concrete if I do use that etching clean material. 
so it doesn't maybe look so blotchy rather than mottled, marbled, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to try it. And I know it's going to add an extra day into my process here and a lot of extra work because I'm going to have to scrub the etch and clean in and clean it off with clean water. So go through the whole process again of cleaning all of this and then letting it all dry out again. So it's another whole day worth of waiting, but it will be worth it in the end, I hope. In this step, we're going to etch this smooth child concrete. We're going to use the Eagle brand etch and clean, and I need to dilute this uh, one part to four parts water. So I've already filled my acid pump sprayer, this is my, from my acid stain here, this will handle the acid, with water. So I'm gonna put the, the uh, I'm gonna put the etch and clean in here with that. I've also got a second pump sprayer with just clean water, and that's to dampen the concrete first before I put the etch and clean on. That's part of the instructions to do that. I also have my scrub brush, my nylon scrub brush to scrub it in, and then the mop and bucket of clean water to then clean the sections as I go because we're not supposed to allow the etch and clean to dry on the concrete. Otherwise, you've got to put more etch and clean on to re-etch, re-clean it, I guess, to, to get it off. So uh, we got to make sure we keep it wet and clean as we move forward through the different sections of the floor. All right, let's get started. All right, so I've got already four parts of water in here, so I just need to add the acid. I think I'm gonna just do this one section here. It's outlined by these expansion joints. We'll do this one as our test. Okay, now for the etch, etch and clean. Oh yeah, the more expensive uh, pump sprayer is definitely better. Ooh. That's... That first bit must have been just water because it wasn't foaming up like this. Okay, so now I got good coverage of that. I'm gonna come back and Use the scrub brush. I scrub that in. All right, I'm scrubbing this, and I noticed here, see, that's a blood stain. It didn't come off with the degreaser. Uh, you know, we, we've had a, a little bit of blood, sweat, and tears on this job, and that, that's a blood stain. There's a couple drops here. I thought they were going to add character to my floor. But this acid, the acid etch, it just, it's gone. So, I'm glad I made the decision to do the acid etch because it is seeming to do something even more than the degreaser, degreaser neutralizer was doing. It is cleaning it more thoroughly and giving that slight etch I can see better patterns in the actual concrete itself that I think are gonna show through with the stain better. So I am really glad I made the decision to do this acid etch. So I'm doing just sections at a time to make sure it's not uh, drying on me. Wetting it down, going back, adding the acid, scrubbing it in. And I'm gonna do this one whole section in here, This where it's uh, separated by this expansion joint. And I'm gonna come back and then clean this off before I start that section over there. This whole section done, I'm gonna come back now with the mop and some clean water and clean this off because it's already starting to dry and haze up a little bit. You don't want that to happen. So I'm just gonna add a lot of water to this just to make sure that that acid doesn't haze up on me to where I need to do this all over again. So I'm just gonna do it real quick Rinse. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna regret this decision at all. When in doubt about the acid etch, just do it. It's not worth the mistake if you don't do it and you find out after you should have done it. 
I don't think it's gonna hurt anything if you do do it and if you didn't really need to do it. Rinse for this section over here. And I'm just taking clear water, clean water, and really just getting it on there. Just pouring it on, making it super wet to really rinse the floor here. Just a lot of water. I can't really use a hose in here and spray it down or a power washer, so I just wanna really soak it up or get it soaked. And then I'm gonna go back and pull all this water up and wring it out in here. And we'll see how dirty the water is and we'll just keep going until that water is somewhat clean and clear. I guess this is an indication that whatever I'm doing here is working because the water is fairly dirty. All right, here's the second rinse. Still very dirty. Here's the third rinse and it's still a little brown. So maybe one more time. It's super important that this thing gets cleaned well. And this etching I think is, now remember this is the acid etch for this particular brand and not um, muriatic acid. Muriatic acid will actually ruin the concrete or reduce the amount of the effect of the acid stain. The acid etching is complete and now we're just waiting to let this dry so we can do the concrete stain. I can't believe that I almost didn't do the etching process. I almost shortcutted this thing. It's not like me. And I can't believe I even considered it. Don't consider it. Do the acid etch. It made a big difference using that acid etch cleaner. Um, it is definitely noticeable. Well, it's the next morning and we are ready to go. Everything is nice and dry and clean and ready to apply the acid stain. So I've got the acid stain here and in my acid pump sprayer and my pump sprayer full of water that we're gonna to use to dampen the floor and then apply the stain and my scrub brush back here uh, that we'll use to kind of work the acid stain into the floor. Not sure if that's totally necessary, but I've seen people do that, so I'm gonna try it. All right, let's get started. So now I'm just wetting this down, getting the concrete damp. All right, here we go. It definitely goes on yellow, orangish yellow. You can clearly see where it's drying and turning color compared to this yellow orange that's going on here. So the acid's doing its job. All right, well, the staining is done, and it's been about eight, nine hours or so since I started the staining. 
So it's time to neutralize it and clean it up. It's gonna take many, many more washings with the mop and water to, and the neutralizer to get this thing cleaned up. So, another round of mopping. So it looks somewhat brown, but there's a lot of black and gray showing in. And that brown, I think, is what's gonna wash off. But it looks really good. But then the clear coat on top of this is what's gonna make it really look good. Give it depth. Bring out all the textures. So this is what it looks like with the neutralizer. So I just put a really thick, you know, wet coat with the neutralizer and uh, scrubbed it and mopped it. But I didn't sop anything up yet. This is all just still pretty wet and the suds from the neutralizer. But you can kind of see that the color and the depth yeah, this is gonna look really good. So now I'm gonna go with some clean water and start sopping some of this up and continue to clean. Okay, it's been 24 hours or more since I've cleaned this floor thoroughly and let it dry for over those 24 hours. So it should be good to go to get the sealer on. And it looks pretty good. I do have a couple little warnings um, that we didn't know about to take care of. Um, this is a barn, so the, the concrete wasn't like a perfect flat finish. So there were low spots. And I don't remember any direction anywhere to say to not let the stain pool up in these low spots. So I do have some dark spots here and there that where the, the acid stain pooled up and sat for too long and, and I couldn't get it up. So, you know, it's character, I guess. Um, but I wish it wasn't there. So I wish I had known to at least smooth out the, the stain so it didn't pool there, you know, using that scrub brush to kind of spread it out. Um, well, lessons learned. Hopefully you guys won't make that same mistake. All right, um, the other thing was the blue tape. The blue tape got into the mop and a, just a piece of it, a small piece of it, and it shredded it. The acid destroyed it and created these little blue fuzzies all over the floor. So I had to sweep it really, really well with a clean broom and get that you know, off the floor because you don't want any fuzzies on this floor when you go to put the sealer on it and that gloss coat because it will show. So I've got the pump sprayer I'm going to use to apply the sealer on the entire floor. But I'm going to work it in using this lambskin, 100% lambskin applicator. This is a brand new applicator, so it needs to get um, a little bit of the, the new fuzzies kind of off of it. I don't want any fuzzies on this floor. So we're just going to use some masking tape to kind of stickiness to pull off a lot of those fuzzies. Just in the, you know, because it's brand new, the initial use of it. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Get just some of those loose fuzzies that are on there. There shouldn't be too many. And that's the whole point of using a 
100% natural lambskin applicator. This is good to do on even just regular paint rollers when you're painting your walls. If you have a brand new, or even the used ones, just to make sure there's no dirt or fuzzies that can come off into your paint. Okay. Let's see if I can pour this without spilling it. Okay, not too bad. Working on the second coat here. It's looking really, really good. I'm going this way on the second coat. But I'm, this is starting to look really, really good. A lot more of what I anticipated it to look like. What do you think, Michaela? It's, it's, it's very slick. Good. It's slick. It's not too slick, though. No. It's not, it's not like you're gonna fall down. The dogs might uh, have a little fun <laughs> sliding. But yeah, it turned out good. So everything is sealed. Two coats. And then now we've got yes. The gloss. All right. So we got this last step of the concrete polish. So we'll do two to three coats of this gloss, concrete polish, and this will help also have um, a little bit of anti-slip in it. So the instructions say here to uh, spray the polish directly on the applicator with low pressure pump sprayer. I got the pump sprayer, I got the applicator. But that seems kind of weird to have to spray it on here and then put it on the floor, rather than just spray the floor and use the applicator. This seems dumb. <laughs> Just gonna spray it on the floor. Wow, this now. This polish, it, this is the first coat of it. It really brings out the depth. I thought the, the sealer itself made it look way better and, and uh, acceptable actually. But now this polish, at least being wet, it really brings the depth out and looks fantastic. Now that's just one coat. I wanna put on probably two more. You don't want to put this on too thin, too thick. So I'm just putting a kind of a thin coat on and stretching it, spreading it out. Man, that looks good. Now this stuff only takes 60 minutes to dry or so in between coats. So I can easily get two more coats on this thing tonight. And then tomorrow, We'll be set, it'll be done. We'll pull the plastic off and see how things are. Wow. Huh. 
Ooh. Look at how nice this floor is, Kristen. I'm gonna turn some lights on. All right. Yeah. She she who put plastic on must remove plastic. Um, I didn't think that was cool. Oh. Okay, let's get going. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go look at the bathroom floor. Nice. Toilet is coming soon. First washer and dryer though, because we are. Two weeks again without washer and dryer, so we gotta get laundry caught up again. Since I had to re remove them to stain the floor. The concrete stain project in the barn dominium is complete and it looks fantastic. Hopefully you learned something from this if you're planning on doing a similar project like this. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the alert bell in case you wanna watch some of the other projects that we're gonna tackle here as we build this ranch from scratch. So until next time, keep living the dream.